I think what a lot of people lack in the area of figuring out what they ultimately want to do is patience and understanding that you can't just decide I'm going to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing and mm -hmm. then tomorrow it's going to just hit you and then it's going to fall in your lap. Um, but the time that you've taken and the time that you're willing to take to do the right thing, not just the thing that's right, right now. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. And I am Troy Jones. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Oh! Wasn't bad. Yeah. Not too bad. It was kind of high pitched. I tried to match it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. For those of you that can't see us, that are uh, listening to the audio, we have a wilderness just beard hair everywhere it's just man in this uh room. it's tamed it's definitely tamed today it's tame yeah it's tamed for you yeah well, now that i look at it, it looks a little wild this is great for the people that are listening and not watching <laughs> so so troy jones is my cousin it's my mm -hmm. dad's sister's son yeah they see the resemblance for sure yeah that's actually what was my beard inspiration really kind of i mean you had it first I did. So Troy yeah. and I <laughs> go way back. <clears throat> I remember growing up, I used to always think about because your name is Troy Harris Jones. And it was T H J, and I'm Tyler Jack Harris, T J H. I'm just used to yeah. think about that. Yeah. But growing up, I can honestly say Troy was one of my absolute best friends, and we didn't get to see each other but what, like twice a year, maybe once. Yeah, um, family vacation. Twice a year, yep. we do Christmas at our grandparents, and we do summer in Destin, Florida. That's the one I remember. The most and my time. parents, just a funny story to, to kick this off. My parents still make fun of me to this day because I loved hanging out with Troy so much that when it became like, if we went down there for a week or five days to our grandparents' house, we're doing all the Christmas stuff. The last two days I would cry like the whole day because <laughs> I didn't want to leave Troy. And my parents would be like, you're ruining your last two days with Troy because you're just complaining and crying and whining. Yeah, I never knew about that, actually. Yeah. Until right now. Feel, which makes you feel awesome. It makes me feel special, actually. Made me cry yeah. as an infant. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about on this podcast? Uprooting, making yourself a little uncomfortable, uh, um, changing location, environment. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think I think the title of <laughs> uh, this podcast, and this is episode 157 of the Sales Rules Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> I think the title of this podcast is really about um, living life with intentionality, um, having intent with what you're doing, not just kind of letting life happen to you, but actually making a decision to say, okay. You know, I'm not doing what I think I'm supposed right. to be doing. Let me just switch everything up and let me figure out what I am supposed to be doing and having that intention behind it because that's super fearful for people. Oh, for, for sure. And I think it's underrated. I mean, I, you know, for, for me personally, you know, my wife and I, for us to kind of uproot. Um, so give a, a little backstory. Yeah. Give so a little backstory. So basically, um, <clears throat> A long time ago, <laughs> you know, about a year ago, my, my wife and I, um, we uprooted. We, we left New Jersey and we decided that we wanted to travel. And you've and been there for how many years? I personally, maybe, but yeah, I, that's kind of where, yeah, from fourth 30? grade on. Yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. 20 plus years. Yeah. Um, and I, I had uh, opened a business um, there in the town that I was living in. And I had really kind of, you know, rooted myself. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then... You know, things started to change a little bit. I, I started changing my roles and getting involved in a couple of different businesses and realized, um, you know, I was enjoying what I was doing, but the environment uh, that I was in, I, I didn't necessarily want to be in anymore. Mm -hmm. And like I really- Toxic or it, just- Not necessarily toxic, just it was almost like I hit, I hit the ceiling of where I was mm -hmm. and, and it was more or less, okay, now what? Yeah. And for me, I've always- been one that wants to travel and see the world and mm -hmm. see what else is out there. And it's tough. I mean, I think that's for me, that's why I want to have a voice today that 
I totally get it. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to kind of pull all the roots out and not know where you're going. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> so what did that look like for you? So you guys left New Jersey and what'd you do? Yeah. So we simplified. That's, that's the big word is simplifying. <laughs> so we were, we, we had a house and we basically brought everything outside and, and either sold it or gave it away to friends and family, except for our two cars. And we stored some stuff with our families. Um, but yeah, we had our two cars and we just hit the road, went right out West with uh, tents and and sleeping bags and and you know we we love uh hiking and and we love the national parks and all that stuff so that was kind of part of it is that we would hit all the national parks hmm. um and the towns around it because the idea was to see what else what other towns are out there and what are they doing how are they making money and mm -hmm. what kind of people are in those towns and ultimately also you were <clears throat> you were trying to look for the place that felt like home that's to, right to plant some new roots in right and that's like the weirdest part I know for both of us, but for me, definitely, when you're in a spot for so long, the roots, they run so deep. Mm -hmm. You know, you the beginning part is kind of like, it's the fun part, because it's new and you're like, okay, you know, but then when you get into it, you realize, all right, now what? Hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and what what is it gonna look like? Mm -hmm. You know, you really have no idea. It's kind of, it's the unknown. And <clears> so, <throat> you know, so if, if you go back to the kind of mental place, the mental uh, or the mindset that you had of, you know, okay, I think I need to make a change. I need to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. The decision to not jump really right into what am I supposed to be doing? Where am I supposed to be doing it? But almost taking a period of time and just almost going off the grid. I mean, just disconnecting from those roots and just experiencing a whole bunch yeah. of amazing things. But it seemed like that was like an intentional thing as well. That it wasn't like, hey, let's leave and then let's figure out what we're going to do. It was like, right. hey, let's just go yeah. explore. Let's have fun for a few months. You had yeah. the money to do it. That's right. Um, you're not going to get any younger. That's right. And so let's just go and. And you got to do it. Yeah. I mean, that that was because we planned. I mean, it was about two years of planning. Because when you have a house, mm -hmm. you can't just turn around and I mean, we, we'd like to. And it'd just be like, okay, take the house. I'm, I want to go travel. So it was a two-year process of really understanding, okay, this isn't just a, I want to go on a vacation. Yeah. This is like, a, okay, boom, we're going. We're Vision you know, quest. That's right. And <laughs> and I like how you put it too, where it's it's more to just disconnect. Mm -hmm. It was almost like hanging up all, all of the different lines that you had open and just saying, okay, hmm. and letting it you know really talk to you and just sit. That, that for me was, I remember being out in California, uh, at Big Sur, and I remember sitting in the water and just being like, this is it. This is where I had a, such a clear mind of this is okay. Mm -hmm. Still, still a little scared yeah. for sure. I mean, the fear is definitely there mm -hmm. without a doubt, but you know. Well, it's almost like <clears throat> you had to get yourself to a place because, you know, they talk about anxiety is mm -hmm. living in the future depression is living in the past yes yeah, I like but that. focusing on the now like focusing on the present it was like getting yourself out of your comfort mm -hmm. zone so that you could be more present right and so that you could really just look at every day as a new opportunity just to have fun and kind of right. learn more about each other yeah and so at what point i'm assuming there was a point where all of a sudden like you know this had gone on for a number of months and, and that feeling of like okay now we Got to start the second step of this process. Yeah. So what was that like? It was, it, that was intense because it was at different times. For me, it was like three months, I would say. Three months, at, you know, being outside of the system and kind of away um, from, you know, having that daily grind, the job, all the to-dos, the you know, the different calendars. Being pulled away from that and not having any schedule, that was tough for me. So that three to six months was when I was like, okay, now we got to start thinking what what do we really want to do what are we looking mm -hmm. for you know and to be honest it really didn't hit us um out, out west at all i mean we you know we both want to have our own businesses again at some point mm -hmm. but for us it was kind of what's the environment mm -hmm. we started instead i think a lot of people they start the wrong way you know they they put themselves in the environment and then and then they want everything to kind of be you know hmm. put together yeah. 
like you usually find the job in the city, right? In the town, and then wife finds the job. You find the schools, right? Then you move, and it's all there. But what you guys did was you took the time to figure out okay, where do we want to actually be, right. and then now the going energy. through that process of okay, now that we're here, what are we going to do? Right. So it's like it's, it's the opposite. Right. You have to plan for that because obviously financially and, and things like that, you have to really be very, you have to, but you have to have a very strict budget, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's totally possible. We love it. I mean, we come, you know, coming to Greenville and feeling the energy right away. Yeah. It was kind of like when we found our spot where we wanted to get married, you know, we got out, we, we felt it and it was like, it clicked because hmm. we've been to some really cool cities across the whole united states and so give everybody like some <clears> context <throat> so like where all did you go how long and how many miles did you track that kind of stuff yeah we tracked it i mean it was it's probably about eighteen thousand miles total wow. of of traveling you know um hmm. but i would say you know we went we started out in the north people will know the north loop so it's 80 so we went straight across okay um you know stopped in colorado did some skiing and stuff uh boulder was a spot that was on our minds hmm. um and uh some other smaller towns arvada and some and some towns uh that were in colorado that we actually you know thought about but see again you get there you actually stay for a little while not just a little vacation you're able to understand mm -hmm. you know okay this isn't this isn't our vibe mm -hmm. You know, so that was a cool spot. Colorado is definitely a cool state. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we traveled across Utah, stayed in Utah for a while, skied in Utah. Utah is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people don't. Yeah. You were telling me about yeah. it too. A lot of people don't know about how gorgeous it is out there. Um, and California, you know, mm -hmm. those are the big ones. Yeah. Uh, you know, that we, that we really enjoyed. Uh, but again, you know, going all the way out west mm -hmm. and being in these towns that are in our minds more touristy than they yeah. are actual actual genuine towns. Sure. We really, you know, they they don't. It's not so much for us. Again, it's not what are the jobs that are out there that we are hunting for. Mm -hmm. We just want to have a, a good area where yeah. there's lots of stuff to do. You can be outdoors. You know, so that that's honestly what led us to stay here. Um, you know, and not and not keep going up north <clears throat> so now i guess you're you're in the middle of step three of the process and so you disconnected you figured out where you want to be and now you're right. figuring out what you're going to do right and that's that's the hard part yeah Definitely. especially if you're going at it in that opposite way um which does feel like the right way to do it like where would i want to be if i could be anywhere in the world and right. then figure out what to do there but it's the opposite of what most people do yeah and again, it, it's the unknown. I didn't know yeah. this was how I was going to feel. And I, there are days I wake up, you know, and I, I think about New Jersey and the comfort, you know, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. knowing everyone, mm -hmm. having the networks together. Mm -hmm. But I kind of I'm excited yeah. about not having any of that together mm -hmm. and being able to really, you know, just kind of take each day and go at it as best I can. And so I think this <clears> is <throat> where where I really think that the people that are listening or watching are going to get some value um, in just kind of talking about your thought process, because I think what a lot of people lack in the area of figuring out what they ultimately want to do is patience and understanding that you can't just decide I'm going to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. And mm -hmm. then tomorrow it's going to just hit you and then it's going to fall in your lap. Um, but the time that you've taken and the time that you're willing to take to do the right thing, not just the thing that's right, right now. Um, so kind of talk about that, that process of, I think for me, it, it has a lot to do with fulfillment rather than success, mm -hmm. which with people will realize that they're the exact same thing. That's right. Um, I often use the analogy. You've got, you know, guys making 200 grand a year. He's working all the time and he can't do the hobbies that he absolutely loves. Well, you got a guy that makes 50 grand a year that does those hobbies all the time, which is more successful. Yep. That's there's right. No, there's no wrong answer. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So talk about that kind of your, your mindset now and, and just looking at opportunities, but kind of look coming from a different perspective. Yeah. I think uh, you, you nailed it. I mean, you know, the idea of, of being able to uproot yourself and then, kind of see it's almost like an out of body experience where you're literally being able to see yourself finally mm -hmm. after you've got yourself out of the system mm -hmm. to
to really see, okay, who am I and what, what do I want to, what do I want to be? What do I want to do? I haven't asked myself that kind of a question in, in so long because yeah. I'm, I, you know, you're in it, you're in that system and you just, you just stay right there. And, mm -hmm. and instead of it being more of, of what do I want to do, you know, and what do I want to be, um, you know, it becomes, I'll just wake up and do what I'm, I guess I'm good at, even though I have no drive, mm -hmm. there's no excitement. Yeah. You know, I, I have lots of energy. And so I, where I want to put it is in a good environment. Mm -hmm. So I, I am nervous, you know, for, for definitely what is around the corner, mm -hmm. but I would much rather have that feeling than have the feeling of, wow, I'm, I'm in quicksand or yeah. I'm just kind of stuck here, just doing my thing. And I felt like I was in that for a little bit. Um, I felt like the things I were doing, I was just doing them because I was good at it. Yeah. And I just kind of stayed in it. And I, it's not really about, okay, well, I could die tomorrow, of course. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's more like I'm spending my, my days at this organization or with this company or with my own business. I want to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I want to laugh and have a good time, you know, and not, and not be kind of in my own head, just kind of going through the motions, mm -hmm. which I know it's easy to do. Like oh, I said, yeah. I went right into it. Yeah. You know, I was good at it. And so for me to be out of that box and to really think outside of the box is, uh, that's, that's exciting for me. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. And so, you know, for the people that are listening, that maybe they don't want to make a big jump and quit their job or, you know, in their business and right. <laughs> buy a camper and, and travel, and travel. The, and travel the country. You know, what are some ways, let's think of some things that they could do to kind of taste mm -hmm. and and try a few things, maybe even in their local area to where they're yep. not making this drastic change, but they can yeah, start no means. They can start getting out there and kind of getting some feelers out for what's <laughs> available. Uh, what would be some of your recommendations there? Did you go through that process yeah. yourself? Did oh, you yeah. Try to kind of get out of work and and just try some other things? I simplified that's like the best way for me hmm. to explain it. Yeah. Because when you start to simplify your life, when you start to really like just even your own thoughts, mm -hmm. things start to kind of surface. Yeah. And that's and true. I know for me, again, by no means am I saying this is like, okay, quit, quit your job and just, you know, buy the camper because people do it. And let me tell you, there's a lot of negative sides to there it. There are too. a lot of barely used campers <laughs> right. in the market for a reason. Yes. I, I mean, <laughs> You know, I would say once you simplify your your thoughts and kind of what's around you. And for us, it was like the house. OK, yeah. we're barely using, you know, a lot of this stuff, some mm -hmm. of the stuff in the attic. So once you start simplifying and, and starting to kind of bring your life down to more of a more of a, I guess, a piece that you can contain. Yeah. Instead of it being, because it's overwhelming. Well, even just on the, ex even just expenses. I mean, the, yeah. the, the, probably the easiest piece of advice to give <laughs> someone is, you know, look at your expenses and figure out all this extra stuff that you're spending money on that you can cut back on or you could sell or, or get out of. Right. Um, or donate. Because if whatever. all of a sudden you reduce your expenses by 50%, then it gives you a little bit more freedom. Right. Um, to go out and take the time off to try other things. Um, to kind of start that process of simplifying their life. But, um, you know, for most people, the idea of just even embarking on a new career that they're lining up to just make an easy transition is I've got all these expenses. I've got my mortgage. I've got the car payment. I've got oh, yeah, that's this. Up. I've got that. Yeah. I've got this. Like I can't afford to make that jump right. because I've only got 17 days until I'm broke because of my expenses going out. Um, so that makes that that makes that makes process almost impossible for someone to actually pull the trigger and right. do it. Uh, so I think what you said is perfect, is, is like how simple, how much can you possibly get rid of all the excess uh, expenses and things that are just cluttering your mind and your house and in your life. And at that point, see like, huh, I actually feel like I can right. breathe a little bit better. And I've got some extra time now because I don't have to work you know, the late hours that I was doing before because my expenses are low. I don't need that as much right. income and I can go try some things on the side. I can go, you know, go on three day weekends to the mountains and experience mm -hmm. things, uh, little day trips here and there, and then start to get an understanding of like, are you really happy where you are? 
or is it some type of external thing that's that's causing the frustration is it a person that you're just frustrated with right. that's causing this toxic environment that you're in but you actually do love what you're doing right like i think a lot of this that's a good process point. mentally <clears throat> is almost separating yourself from the thing that's causing stress ultimately to figure out do you miss it or not you know, like get yourself away from the business, you get have yourself to away from the yep. job. And is there a part of you that's like, man, I wonder what's going on at work or, Hey, right. I wonder what's, uh, I wonder who's handling that meeting. I wonder what's going on with that. Um, and you find yourself like longing to be back in that right. environment. That's just as important as realizing that you need to leave is realizing that you're in the right place. Right. Because then you can start looking at, well, is it some of the relationships that are causing the stress? Is it, you know, what is that thing? And then you can start managing that. But only comes from simplifying and being able to you that's know, right clear your head really yeah and i don't think i think you know for me in traveling the country and and doing this whole process i think for me i realize the amount of noise that's around us mm -hmm. every day yeah you know and and so that for me is something that with simplifying you're able to kind of quiet a lot of that yeah that's just it's distracting you from really thinking about yourself. Mm -hmm. And we work for people, you know, sometimes 30 plus years yeah. for, for an organization or for, that's great. It's your life. Yeah. But you gotta, you, I, that's my thing. I want in those 30 years to say, okay, like mm -hmm. I, I wanted to wake up, you know, and, and get to that yeah. office or get to that place of work, you know, and, and that's where I'm at, you know, and I, I know a lot of us are in that world because mm -hmm. I was in it. Being like, oh, I got, you know, I'm happy. This is great. I, I'm stable. Yep. But then when I start to simplify and realize things, like you said, when I would go away from it, I wasn't thinking about it as much or it was I needed to be away from it just to be away from yeah. it. Yeah, you know, that's true. <clears throat> so we'll probably have to do a follow up podcast. That would be great. With step four. Once yeah. you found it. This is fun. Yeah. Once you found it and then talk about kind of that process and all the sure. immense gratitude at that point for making the right decision, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Um, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you online if somebody wants to reach out to you on social media or something? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm I'm, I'm still, you know, putting together my pages, but yeah. but yeah, LinkedIn would be the best best spot to get a hold of me. Yeah. So if you need a bearded man, yeah, to charm your employees. <laughs> I'm the guy. All right, guys. So with that, this is episode 157 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Troy Jones. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow!